Welcome into this place. God, you are welcome into this broken castle. You desire to abide in the praises of your people. So we lift our hands as we lift our hearts, as we offer up this praise unto your name. Everybody say, well. Lord, everybody. Amen. 
How many know that God is good? And his mercy endureth forever. Amen. Amen. We're living in some hard times now. Going through different things that we never thought we'd go through. But we still have to put our faith and trust in God. Amen. Amen. Because he said he'd never leave us and he'd never forsake us. He'd be with us even to the ends of the world. Amen. So this is not a time now not to pray, not to fast, not to be at church, but it's a time to get close to the Lord. Amen? Amen. Because your adversary, the devil, he's busy. He's out there. He's trying to get everybody he can to go to that lake of fire with him. So in these last and evil days, let us draw nearer to God. Amen? Amen. Right now we're going to go before the Lord in prayer. If there's anyone who has a spoken prayer request, you can stand now and let it be known or simply just by raising your hands. Amen. Remember Sister Priscilla Farabee in your prayers. I spoke with her, I think it was uh, yesterday or the day before. Uh, she's at home, but she said every move is just a struggle. Uh, she said she went to the Cleveland Clinic last Thursday, and uh, they wouldn't actually wait on her because she hadn't taken a coronavirus test. So she... The doctor did speak with her and told her that he knew her situation and the valves that are leaking in her heart. He could, he could go in and he could fix it, but there's no guarantee that they would stop. And then he said the only other option would be open heart surgery, and she said she don't want that. And she's having problems with her lungs, so she said every move is just an exhausting move, so pray for her. And she told me to tell you she needs your prayers, amen? Amen. And Sister Felicia, her grandson, is back home. Amen. She said, thank you for praying for her. Deacon Fields. Yes. Amen. Amen. Any other prayer requests? No other? Well, nobody need anything, huh? Well, pray for me, because I sure need your prayers. Amen. Devil's busy at my house. Amen. Real busy. Amen. He's trying to turn me back. But you know what? I believe my God. I know I've been chosen. I know I've been called. So, you know, and when you know you're doing what's right. Amen. But the enemy is shrewd. Amen. So be careful. He's so shrewd and he's so quick. Amen. But the Holy Ghost is quicker. Amen. So let us stay in the presence of God, amen? As long as we stay in the presence of God, we can do no wrong, amen? Amen. If there are no other prayer requests, let us stand, please. I need your help, just can't make it without your help. I need your help, just can't make it without your help. I have tried over and over again, but I just can't make it without your help.
love of God like a river is flowing. The love of God like a river is flowing. Over my heart, over my life. I can feel it now. Can't you feel it now? The love of God like a river is flowing. The love of God like a river is flowing over my heart, over my life. I can feel it now, can't you feel it now? And He loves us all the Amen. Hallelujah. The Bible said he looked and saw the travail of his soul. Amen. And he was satisfied. Amen. So never doubt that Jesus loves you. No matter what you're going through, no matter what's up against you, Jesus loves you. Amen. Amen. Right now we're going to uh, take up our morning's offering. Amen. We still have to donate to the house of God. Amen. We still have to pay our tithes and our offerings, amen, because we want to be blessed, amen? Amen. I have two children that are, are just, just they, they just know it's written in stone, so to speak, amen, that they know that they'll be blessed if they pay their tithes and offering, amen, and they've been doing it for years now, amen? <laughs> Father, we come before you in the mighty name of Jesus. We ask the Lord that you bless this offering. Bless those that give. Bless those that don't have to give. Lord, we ask that you'll bless it, Lord, for the building up of Christian ministries, the building up of your kingdom. And we thank you, Lord, for the opportunity once again to be able to give into the kingdom of God. In Jesus' name, amen. Here, but you can feel ah. oh. And we still have Tithely on, on Facebook. If you don't want to, if you don't have your tithes today or whatever, you can go to Tithely and make sure you hit Christian Ministries, Amen. And then that way you can pay your tithes, or you can even they have a drop box at the door in the back, Amen. Amen. So let's pay our tithes and offerings so God can continue to bless us, Amen. Amen. Everybody stand, please. Oh, you know that all things, all things 
things are working for my good. Cause he's intentional. Never failing. All things are working for my good. Cause he's intentional. Never failing. Never failing. All things. All things are working for my good. He's intentional. He's intentional. give God a praise. How many of you know that you don't have to worry? You don't have to worry because it's working for you. It's working for me. It's working for me. Come on. I don't have to worry. I don't have to worry. It's working for me. Come on, just prophesy to yourself. It's working for me. It's working for me. Come on. Say, I don't have to worry. I don't have to worry. shall rejoice and be glad in it. My soul doth rejoice in the Lord. I feel like what Mary said, oh, I, my soul doth magnify the name of the Lord. Truly God has been great to us. Thank you, Lord. And we certainly do praise the Lord. Hallelujah. We certainly do praise God for his goodness and his mercy, his grace that he has shown toward us. Amen. How many of you are glad to be in the house of the Lord? I can truly say I was glad when they said unto me, 
let us go into the house of the Lord. And the Bible says, let us enter in his gates with thanksgiving, and let us enter in his courts with praise. Praise ye the Lord. Amen. Just pass those out, Sister Yolanda. Amen. We certainly uh, want to say thank the Lord for how good he's been to each and every one of us. Amen. The Lord is gracious. The Lord is mighty. And the Lord is wonderful. And we want to give honor on today unto our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, from whom all of our blessings flow. Amen. And we want to thank our mighty God for uh, helping us and giving us what we need. Amen. Not only in the time of trouble, but all the time. He's good to us all the time. Amen. It would be a bad parent uh, just to give you what you need when you need it and not bless you all the time. Amen. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. And uh, I was enjoying uh, the one, the second, I think it was the second song uh, that the praise team sung. Uh, was like uh, Sister Monique was uh, telling a story about the love of the Lord, amen, and, um, and how she was giving God glory and praise. And I thought about she mentioned something about him being a parent, man, and it's good uh, to know that the Lord is not an absent parent. Some of us have had absentee parents, uh, but the Lord is there with us all the time. The Bible says he will never leave us nor forsake us. And we certainly do praise the Lord for his faithfulness. Uh, the Bible tells us morning by morning, great is thy faithfulness. How many of you know the Lord is faithful? Amen. I appreciate the faithfulness of God. And When you uh, can think about all the attributes, uh, all the values that God has, it makes you appreciate him more and more and I certainly do appreciate the Lord for he is great and he is greatly to be praised and we certainly do honor our first lady on today Lady Tracy Quinn we thank God thank God for her amen we thank God also for Pastor Elois Duck we give God praise and honor for her amen and we certainly uh, do thank God and praise God for our deacons, Deacon Daniels and Deacon Fields. Amen. We certainly do thank God for them. And Mother Louise, we praise God uh, for her. Amen. And we also honor our, um, our uh, usher board. Amen. They, they're doing a fine job. We praise God for them as well. And our media team. Amen. We praise God for Sister Clarissa. Uh, Brother Wall and Brother Duru, amen. We thank God for them, amen, and the awesome job that they're doing, especially in these times to keep us going and keeping us connected. And we certainly do praise God for all of our Facebook uh, family, our following that uh, uh, has connected with us in ministry, amen. We thank God for them, and we thank God for all of you, that are coming to church and those that are holding up the bloodstained banner. We thank God for Christian ministry. Give God a praise. Give God a praise. Amen. We see Sister Rosetta. She came in in the midst. Amen. Give God a praise. For her. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. And I was, I was looking. I was looking. And I'm saying, well, who is that there? You know, because the mask kind of throw you off. And she... She dyed her hair a little bit. <laughs> Amen. Thank you, Lord. But you know what, what caught me? When she started moving. And I said, oh, I know who that is. <laughs> Amen. Thank you, Lord. The Lord knows us by our praise. <laughs> Come on and give the Lord a praise. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. We certainly do praise and appreciate the Lord for all of his goodness and his mercy that he has shown toward us even unto today, amen, and all the adults, you should have received, by way of announcements, you should have received a invitation, amen, this, uh, I'm going to just make this clear, <laughs> you know, just because uh, the season that we're in, we're in this pandemic season, and we're trying to limit the crowds and, and things such as that and have social distancing, 
but you know, we want to do some things that are normal. So um, it's intentionally left out uh, family and friends uh, on this particular invitation. Um, so if if some of your family and friends do show up, you know, I ain't gonna we ain't gonna kick nobody out. <laughs> you know what I mean? But um, we're having this picnic for Christian ministries here. Uh, it says it's a grab. What is it? It's a grab and go sip and dip fellowship picnic. Ain't that sound catchy? <laughs> Sister Nemo, she 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 got that together. It's a grab and go sip and dip fellowship picnic. That's a little catchy. That's a little rap there. I'm going to give me a little rap song. <laughs> if I had some musicians, I'd have them give me a beat. <laughs> uh, sitting up here, amen. But we certainly do want to invite you to come out, and um, it's going to be uh, out there in the courtyard, and we'll have everything set up um, uh, August 16th, 2020, here at Christian Ministries, uh, 501 West 31st Street. And we'll have enough here for about 50 people, amen, so if you want to take some home with you, uh, you'll be more than welcome to do that, amen. So uh, August 16th, uh, 2020, uh, here at Christian Ministries at 1230, amen. We'll have the grill fired up, um, uh, some hot dogs, hamburgers. Uh, you know, I'm going to try to persuade persuade them to get a little ribs in there, you know, see what's going on. Amen. And, uh, we have salad. And I was thinking, you know, it's a sip and dip. And I'm looking at the menu. I uh, ain't no dip. So, <laughs> so I just added on mine chips and dip. <laughs> so we'll have some dip here. Uh, thanks, Bailey. Get some, um, uh, you know, how those at work they be getting those. Uh, Kind of like uh, chicken dips, and I can't think of the names of them that I want to say. But taco dip, yeah. queso dip, yeah, we will we'll have some of that here, amen. So we can have some dip, so we can be true to what we're saying. <laughs> Pops juice and some desserts, amen. So we can uh, just fellowship just for a little bit, amen, and and uh, keep things going. And I do appreciate everyone. I certainly do for the giving of their tithes and their offerings uh, to keep Christian ministries going. I thank God uh, for your dedication and your work uh, that you do uh, to keep things moving in the proper direction. Amen. And I uh, thank and praise the Lord. I already uh, thank God for our deacons, but I want to uh, let Deacon Fields know that we appreciate you. Amen. Amen. <laughs> Deacon Fields is the one that that's that set this auditorium up. He uh you know, we had made mention that we want to move the chairs and uh do the social distancing. But myself I was reluctant. <laughs> and Deacon Fields took the bull by the horns, came in, got the job done. <laughs> Amen. So <laughs> good God some praise. Amen. Sometimes somebody that's gonna push you. Amen. Push you in the right direction. Not push you off the cliff, but push you in the right direction. And also Deacon Fields and painting some doors and doors and things like that around here. We we certainly do thank God for that and his efforts. Amen. We certainly do appreciate uh, all that everyone does. I don't want to single nobody out, but I certainly do appreciate everything, everything that everyone does to the keeping of the church clean, to uh, uh, calling uh, your members and encouraging people uh, to uh, whatever you do, amen. I certainly do appreciate each and every one of you. I want to make that clear, amen. Thank you, Lord, and I love each and every one of you, and I love uh, all the people of God. And I know that uh, by way of announcement, too, before we get into the preached word of God, um, on Wednesdays now, I've been doing, trying to get the Bible study done early because I'm, uh, I'm you know, we're streaming it on our Christian Ministries page uh, uh, through Facebook and um, just be waiting around to 6 o'clock. I already had a word in me and I just want to do it. 
didn't make make, make sense to me. So, but I really I started to do it at four o'clock. But Sister Clarissa, I want you to listen to me, Amen. But I, I'm gonna move it. Just be um, how can I say it amenable to other people. I want to uh, move it to five o'clock. I'm gonna do my Bible studies on uh, Facebook uh, live at five o'clock. Amen. Get that done, and uh, I certainly do appreciate that. And also, too, um, I'm going to go back to doing uh, the Sunday schools. Uh, I'm going to do that from 9 to 9.45 or 9.30 on Sundays. So we'll still uh, be uh, getting back into that. I miss Sunday school. I love Sunday school. Amen. And uh, it's a school of higher learning. And in these times, you know, you have to be adaptable and you have to uh, also to uh, be amenable because if you don't uh, make necessary changes, uh, especially in these times, uh, then you'll lose out. You'll miss out. Amen? Amen, Brother Pastor. <laughs> so also, too, I want you to uh, be aware as well. Uh, we're going to, I'm only here, I haven't told this to the media team. Uh, they're hearing it for the first time as well. But we're going to establish us in a Zoom account as well so that we can uh, stay in touch face-to-face -face with our members. So, um, you know, download Zoom on your uh, computers or your Facebooks or whatever or, or your phones. And um, we'll also, I know some people are being reluctant right now, but we'll have some training for you, amen, to help you, to assist you, amen, so that we can... Uh, maintain our level of contact so we can maintain our level of fellowship. Amen? Hallelujah. We got to be smarter than the devil. Amen? Amen. So uh, we're going to make the necessary changes and do what we have to do. I was uh, talking to my wife uh, the other day and I was letting her know, you know, we were going through uh, she was trying to get on to various apps and stuff like that. And I uh, was letting her know, honey, you got to, you know, uh, uh, learn about these things. You got to practice them and play with them until you become more comfortable with it. Amen? It's all about comfortability. So when we uh, set up uh, more or less our virtual type of services during the week, uh, calling for fellowship during the week, uh, play with those apps, play with uh, various stuff till you become um, uh, comfortable with it. Educate yourself. Amen. You have you have the ability to learn. Amen. Always be teachable. Always be a student. Never stop being a student. Amen. Amen. And also to I'm, I'm moving pretty quickly here. Um, um, please uh, check on your brothers and sisters and uh, see about their well-being and how they're doing. And uh, we certainly do uh, want you to do that. Also, too, at 3 p.m., I'll have my consecration service. Amen. At the consecration service, it will be uh, on Facebook, or, or they're doing it through YouTube. I like that concept. You know, YouTube is a better... Uh, a better way of viewing things, and um, it, it doesn't, uh, it has a better picture, better sound. So they're going to be streaming it through YouTube uh, off of their Facebook. I'll be here at the church uh, on Zoom where they can uh, see me and my wife, my lovely wife. They're going to see us, and then you'll be projecting all others uh, that uh, are going through that process. So we'll be looking to establish that at 3 o'clock. <clears throat> Excuse me. And um, so we can be able to uh, do that at 3 p.m. Amen. And remember, also by way of announcement, uh, fasting and prayer on Thursday. Fasting and prayer on Thursday. Thur uh, Thursday at 4, uh, uh, I'm sorry, at 12 a.m. to Thursday at 4 p.m. And during that time, you consecrate yourself and uh, fasting and praying for the strength and the health of the church. 
Amen. And you are the church. When I say the church, I'm not talking about necessarily Christian ministries. I'm talking about the body of Christ. Amen. Amen. So amen. So we certainly do praise them. I'm, I'm acting like I'm in a meeting now. I'm not getting ready to say, is there any questions? <laughs> amen. Amen. But we certainly do appreciate each and every one of you. We thank God for you. And I'm just looking over my notes here, and I believe I hit all of the highlights um, that I wanted to hit. Remember, Bible study at 5 o'clock on Wednesdays. Sunday school, I'm going to open that back up at 9 a.m. on Saturdays from 9 to 9.30 or 9.45. Uh, we're going to continue with our 10 a.m. service, 10 a.m. to 11.30. Amen. And uh, remember that our fellowship picnic is August 16th. It's a grab and go, sip and dip fellowship picnic. Amen. Uh, and we already discussed the menu. Amen. And, and those that <clears throat> we're trying to make this really a cookless uh, type of picnic, except for the hot dogs and hamburgers, and we'll have people out there um, uh, slaving over the grill uh, to get things done and get things nice and hot and ready for us as we fellowship one with another. Amen. Amen. So we certainly do praise God. Praise God. Amen. Bless that wonderful name of Jesus. Bless that wonderful name of the Lord. Oh, bless that wonderful name of Jesus. There is no other name. I know, oh, bless that wonderful name of Jesus. Bless that wonderful name of the Lord. Bless that wonderful name of Jesus. There's no other name I know. Oh, there's power in the name of Jesus. Well, there's power in the name of the Lord. There's power in the name of Jesus. Oh, bless the name I know. One more time. Oh, bless that wonderful name of Jesus. Bless that wonderful name of the Lord. Bless that wonderful name of Jesus. Well, there's no other name I know. Oh, there's healing in the name of Jesus. There's healing in the name of the Lord. Oh, there's healing in the name of Jesus. There's no other name I know. Let the church stand. Thank you, Lord. And why don't you grab your Bible and go with me to the book of Romans. Romans chapter number 12. The book of Romans chapter number 12. And truly the book of Romans is a literary masterpiece as it deals with your salvation, your justification, and your sanctification, and how the Lord has brought us out of sin. So in Romans chapter number 12 and verse number 1, it says, And I beseech you, therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that ye present your bodies as a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable unto God, which is your reasonable service. And be not conformed to this world, but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind, that ye may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. In verse number three, for I say through the grace given unto me, to every man that is among you, 
not to think of himself more highly than he ought to think, but to think soberly according to as God have dealt to every man the measure of faith. And our subject on today was coming from that second verse, uh, and be not conformed, but uh, be not conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind, that ye may prove what is that good and acceptable uh, and perfect will of God. O oh, gracious Father, in the name of Jesus, Lord, we know that your word is anointed, and we ask you, Lord, that you anoint your servant, anoint these thy great people, and anoint the hearers of the word out there in virtual land. We ask you, Lord, that you send forth your anointing, send forth your deliverance. We pray in Jesus' name, your word shall not return unto you void, but will accomplish whereunto it is sent. And Lord, let us be not only hearers, but doers of your word. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. You may be seated in the presence of the Lord. And we want to take for a subject on today and talk about being transformed by the renewing of your mind. Renewing of your mind. Scripture says, and be not conformed but be ye transformed by the renewing of the mind that ye may prove what is that good and excellent and perfect and acceptable will of God. Amen. And we, uh, in this particular day and age, we should all uh, appreciate the Lord and what he is doing not only for us, but to us and through us. Uh, the word of God is certainly, in other words, the word of God is certainly applicable uh, now as it is when it was first written. The word of God never changes. And the revelation that we receive of the Lord gets brighter and brighter, the Bible says, unto a perfect day. In other words, those that are in the word of God and those that receive God's word on a continual basis, God will continually reveal his word. The scripture says in the book of Hebrews that in sundry times and in divers manners, God had spoken to us by the prophets, but in these last days, notice, in these last days, he's spoken unto us by his son. So the word of God began with the prophets and in these last days uh, have been ended with his son. So well, I say that to let you know that there is a transition that God expects in his word that we should always be prepare to transition, to walk in the light as we see the light. Oftentimes, a lot of people get stuck in the old way that God has been doing things. And when I say the old way that God has been doing things, it simply means that uh, when God shows you more revelation into his word, you have to be able to change. Uh, there were a lot of people that were in the Old Testament that got stuck because grace came and favor came, that God changed the law to grace. The Bible says that you cannot be saved by the law. Before, they had it in their mind that they could be saved by following the commandments of the law. But when Jesus Christ came on the scene and preached and gave his life as a ransom for you and I, uh, the Old Testament was closed or the Old Testament became fulfilled and God opened unto us a new and living way. Uh, do you hear me here today? God opened up a new and living way through Jesus Christ. The Bible says that we are saved by grace and that through 
faith in Jesus. And those that want to get saved, they can't put their trust in the law of Moses, but they had to turn and put their trust in Jesus Christ. And as you know, if you study your church history, that a lot of people had a struggle with changing. A lot of people uh, had struggled with not believing in the law and changing their faith to Jesus Christ. Uh, even your apostle Paul, the Bible says that before his conversion, he was rounding up all those that believed in Jesus until he received a revelation of Jesus, until Jesus revealed himself and opened up him a more excellent way and told him that you are a chosen vessel. Uh, how many of you know that you're chosen here today? My God, he told him that you are a chosen vessel unto me, that I can want to show my will and my good pleasure. I'm going to show him the things that he must suffer for my name's sake. And when Paul received that revelation of Jesus, the Bible says that God uh, had anointed him. He went down to a house and he was baptized in the name of Jesus and he received the precious gift of the Holy Ghost. And the Bible then says that after he received that word and after he received the anointing, he went into Arabia and was taught by Jesus for the space of three years. And the Bible tells you that he begins to preach Christ and him crucified. Uh, he made the switch. He made the change be, because the Lord had showed him a more excellent way. And that's the day and time that we're living in, brothers and sisters, where in we have to make switches. We have to make changes because the Lord is showing us a more excellent way. Uh, there had never been a time that I can think of in my mind that uh, the time that we're living in now. Uh, we have never experienced situations and conditions that we have experienced now that we've never experienced them before. If you can just think in your Holy Ghost mind that you would never thought that a time like this would be at hand. You would have never thought that a time like this would you would be living through. Well, I'm here to tell you that God has a plan, that God has sent forth a revelation that we should make some certain changes in the way that we operate. If you just think just for a moment before I really get into the sermon, I'm trying to get you to see and understand some certain things that have transpired even unto this day. I remember when this coronavirus or this pandemic first happened, uh, the scripture went out and the word of God went out that if my people, that were called by my name, if they would humble themselves and pray, if they would seek my face and turn from their wicked ways, then God would hear from heaven and heal the land and forgive the sin. And, and you know, just like me, I'm thinking that God had allowed these things to happen because of the sin of the land and because of the sin that was going on in the world. But if you can understand, brothers and sisters, repentance, uh, repentance has gone on through this present day, uh, but we're still dealing with this pandemic. So you have to take a second look and really think about what's really what's really going on because in this city in this state in this country throughout the world everybody has been affected by this particular pandemic everybody has been perfected or affected by the things that are going on it's as if God put a pause on the whole world that Everybody has to take notice that God is 
still in control. Everybody has to stop what they're doing, not only in the United States, but in the UK and in Africa and throughout Russia and throughout uh, Rome and Italy. And you can go on and on and name every area or every place in the world that see that things have changed, that see that things have stopped. And when you begin to think about it and put it in that type of magnitude, you have to come to the conclusion that this thing may not be sent from God, but this thing has been allowed by God to get our attention. And not only your attention, but the attention of the world. Oh, my God, who am I talking to here today? You have to expand your mind and you have to let go of the old way of thinking and come to the conclusion that God is trying to say something, not only to me, but God is trying to say something to the world. God is trying to put out a message to not only you and I, but he's trying to put out a congregational message uh, to those that have been called by his name, those that are seeking his face, those that need salvation, those that need deliverance. God is making it plain that he doesn't want business as usual. God wants people to turn to him especially in this hour of need, in this time of trouble. So you have to transform. You have to transform. You have to transform your mind and get out of the old way of thinking and walk in the light as God has, my God, as God has opened up the light. God says in his word, in his word is ever revealing. God's word is ever revealing. God's word is ever revealing. When we think even about faith, when we think about faith, when we think about faith, we preach faith uh, that you can name it and claim it. We preach faith that you can walk by faith and not by sight that with by faith you can obtain things from God that by faith you can receive your blessings from God but I'm here to tell you that you have to shift tell your neighbor you gotta shift you've got to shift your level of faith now to a state where I can go through the danger I can go through the tribulation I can go through uh, the attacks that are happening now. You have to shift your faith uh, from a faith of reach up and grab it uh, to a faith that I can endure. Uh, to a faith that I'm on the battlefield uh, for my Lord uh, and I can suffer persecution but I'll still be faithful. Uh, oh, you've got to switch your faith. Uh, you've got to walk by faith. Uh, the level of faith that tells you uh, that I'm a soldier uh, in the army of the Lord uh, and I can endure hardness. Uh, you've got to shift your faith uh, to a faith that tells you uh, to put on the whole armor of God uh, where you can be able to stand uh, against the wiles of the devil. Uh, you've got to shift your faith uh, and allow your faith to dig deep uh, because hard times are coming uh, because situations in perilous times uh, are on the way. Uh, you can look around now and see uh, oh that people are dying. Uh, that people are starving. Uh, oh you can look around now and see uh, that there's upheaval. Uh, oh my God even uh, my God even in racial wars that are going on even on today. Uh, I've never seen it before uh, oh, where the saints of God uh, have not led revolution uh, but now revolution uh, has been taken up in the streets uh, revolution is going on not only in America uh, but it's going on all around the world uh, so you've got to realize that there's a shift uh, uh, there's a turning and you have to get into the shift 
Christ uh, and get into the turning uh, or you'll be left behind. Uh, if you can't have church uh, the way you think you were having church, uh, the way you used to have church, uh, but now you have to uh, uh, be conformed, uh, not conformed to this world, uh, but you have to be transformed. Uh, tell your neighbor, I have to be, uh, I have to be transformed uh, by the renewing of your mind. That means when you read the word of God, you have to shift. You have to allow God to give you a new revelation, a new understanding, a new power in his word. The word of God never changes. The word of God never changes. But the revelation. God, what God reveals, it gets brighter and brighter unto a perfect day. And God is saying that I'm calling you to lift up your head, all ye gates, and be ye lifted up, ye everlasting doors, and the King of glory, he shall come in. Who is the king of glory? It's the Lord. He's strong and mighty. He's mighty in battle. You have to shift your faith to a faith where it says, I am persuaded that I'm going to trust in the Lord with all my heart and not lean to my own understanding, but I want to acknowledge him. In all of his ways, and Lord, you lead me. Lord, you guide me. Lord, you strengthen me. Lord, you help me. Lord, you bless me. Lord, you deliver me. Even in this hour of need, for I will bless the Lord at all times, and his praises, it shall continually be in my mouth. You give your God a praise. You ought to give your God a praise. You ought to give your God a praise. Because God is saying, I want you to prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. In order to do that, you got to shift. You got to renew your mind. You got to renew your praise. You got to renew your worship. You got to renew your faith and allow your faith and allow your praise and allow your worship to be rooted and grounded in Jesus. Come on and give God a praise. That kind of shot. Somebody say shift, shift in this atmosphere, shift in the way you seek after your God, shift in the way you praise your God, shift in the way you serve your God. You got to give God a praise. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Can't go back. Can't go back. No turning back. No turning back. No turning back. Can't go back. I got to shift. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Tell your neighbor you got to shift. Uh, then your mind has to be renewed. Uh, that means you got to get into the deeper revelation of God. What is God saying to the church now? Hallelujah. What is the Lord saying to the church now? Hallelujah. You've got to use common sense. Hey, hallelujah. And make the shift. Lord, help me here, Holy Ghost. Those that don't shift. Even as we look in the natural, we've got people in the world that know people are dying of this coronavirus. But because they don't want to shift, they're having corona parties. 
people with the virus go to other people uh, that don't have the virus and they know they got the virus and they don't take precautions and they get sick because they don't want to shift. You got to want to shift. You got to want to shift in the Lord. God has allowed it to where God is getting our attention. Oh my God, now I feel, I feel a whole other message coming on. God is getting our attention. Why? Because we're in the last days. Jesus is soon to come. You got to get your house in order. You got to make the shift. God is using this hour as a prophet. This virus is as a prophet. Like Noah was building the ark, telling that it's going to rain. It's going to rain. God has sent this pandemic to tell us to get our house in order. Jesus is soon to come. Like the, like the flood that happened, it affected the whole world. That let you know it was sent by God or it was allowed by God. This situation is happening. Hallelujah. To affect the whole world. To let us know that this thing was allowed by God. And we have to shift. Huh? We got to shift. My God. The Bible says, be not conformed, but be what? By the renewing of your mind, that you may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. Hallelujah. Come on and give God a praise. Let us follow peace with all men and holiness without the which no man shall see the Lord. Hallelujah. I need your help. <laughs> can make without your help. Yeah. Need your help. If you need his help today, why don't you Just sing it? Just can make it without your help. I have tried and I have tried yes, over and over again. I've tried over and over, but Lord. But I just can't make it. Lord, I need you to help me. Without your help. I need you to help me to accept the things that I, I can't change. I have tried. I need you to help me to change the things and over that I can't again. Hey, hey. But I just can't make it. Yes, Lord. Without your help. And I need you to bless me to know the difference between the two. I need, yeah. I, I need, need your help. How many of you need the help of the Lord just on today? Just can't make it. Yes, Lord. Without your help. <laughs> I need, yeah, I need your help. As we're standing across this sanctuary. Just can't make it without, without your help. We're going to ask Pastor Duck if she would pray. I have tried over and over again, but I just can't. Without your help, and I have tried over and over again, but I just can't make it without your help. Father, we come before you in the mighty name of Jesus. We thank you, Lord, for this word that we've heard this morning. We ask you, Lord, to help us, Lord, to not help be conformed me. to this world, but to be transformed, Lord, by the renewing help of our minds. Lord, we're asking that you'll bless us, Lord. Create in us, Lord, clean hearts. 
Work in us, Lord, both the will and the do, Lord, of your good pleasure. Help us, Lord, to seek you, Lord, while you may be found. To call on you, Lord, while you are near. Lord, we're asking that you look on every soul, Lord, that's under the sound of my voice. Asking, Lord, that you'll bless, Lord, touch, Lord, yes. grant the needs, Lord, the desires, Lord, and fulfill, Lord, your will in their lives. Move everything in us, Lord, that's not like you, and fill us with your goodness, hallelujah. Oh, hallelujah. Lord, we're asking that you'll look on every situation this day. And look on every circumstance, Lord. Bring down every stronghold in our lives and help us, Lord, to lay aside every, every evil work. As we see the day approaching, Lord, help us, Lord, to girdle up. Hallelujah. Help us to put on the whole armor of God that we might stand, Lord, against the wiles of the devil. Hallelujah. And quench every fiery dart, Lord, in the mighty name of Jesus. We ask that you continue to bless our pastor. Strengthen him, Lord, in his spirit, soul, and body. Bless him, Lord. Continue, Lord, to feed his mind, Lord, that you might, he might feed your people. And, Lord, we be so careful, Lord, as to give you all the glory, all the honor, and all the praise in Jesus' mighty name. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. Hallelujah. One Lord, one faith, one baptism. In Jesus' name, amen. God bless you.